Hello everybody, this is Steve with Newegg TV. We are continuing our coverage of CES 2015. I have made my way to Asus, Asus's suite with JJ, of course. How you doing, JJ? I'm doing all right, boss. Good to see you. Oh man. Hello everybody there at Newegg TV. <laughs> so um, I guess I probably want to start off with, with uh, these beautiful SLI bridges that you have just because it's quick and dirty and it was right behind me. Yes. These are gorgeous, man. Uh, how long have you guys been working on these? Uh, we've actually been working on them for about, I'd say, six months or so. So okay. they're really nice, high quality. They're going to be coming out before the end of Q1. Two-way, three-way, and four-way. Definitely make sure to stay tuned to Newegg. I'm sure they'll give you guys an update as soon as they're going to be out and available. Pretty Sweet. cool. Sweet. And then behind me is is probably one of the biggest reasons ever to come and talk to you today. Yes. <laughs> I would definitely say there's a lot of people that are really interested in this. Uh, in the past, we've already done some coverage on the ROG Swift, the original kind of ultra high-end gaming monitor. Awesome. It was 2560, 144 hertz, one millisecond response time, right? And G-Sync, right? All, com all combined in an awesome looking monitor right and uh, this time around we've gone ahead and taken it to the next level we had a lot of users that were asking for 4k they really really wanted that ultra high definition image right Absolutely. and that's what we have right here it's the exact same looking monitor so we've kept everything in terms of the housing mm -hmm. uh, that ultra thin millimeter bezel you have all the levels of adjustment so you got height tilt pivot rotation nice. that really nice precision adjustment base the red ring it's all identical nice. the main difference is going to be the panel so we're going to be rocking a 3840 by 2160 so 4k it's going to be 60 hertz in terms of the refresh rate perfect five five to six milliseconds is the projected response time for the panel and then of course you add in the g-sync and you've got an awesome true gaming monitor for that ultra high definition image nice yeah so so this has been my my concern actually all the time whenever i talk mm -hmm. about 4k gaming is that obviously g-sync is going to help with any kind of uh drop in frame rate and make it look more smooth yeah um my my issue as you know i'm i'm huge into 120 hertz or plus refresh rate with yeah. uh, gaming Obviously, the 2560 by 1440 panel is perfect for that because hardware can push that. Obviously, yep. hardware cannot push anything beyond 60 hertz refresh rate right now. But, or well, it can, but it won't be able to do it as, it won't be able to hit 120. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it depends on the game. I mean, True. you know, for the majority of the absolute, let's say, AAA premium titles out there, if we want to have all the eye candy and we want to have their resolution, you're right. Generally, most situations, we're going to be averaging a frame rate that's going to be probably between about 35, 40 to about 60, maybe 65 frames. So nice. that's perfect for G-Sync because it's in that sweet spot, keeps everything nice, fluid. It's going to give you that great experience in terms of mitigating any type of that screen tearing. And definitely, as we progress over time, or if you're playing older titles, definitely you're going to be able to go and go to higher refresh rates. But at the same time, that just means you're going to consistently be at 60 frames and it's just going to be super like butter. Um, and definitely, as the future progresses and we get into 1.3 in terms of the DisplayPort standard, that's right. going to be opening up the bandwidth for us to be able to unlock 4K at higher refresh rates. Uh, but that's some right. hardware requirements that are going to still need to be down the pipeline. Uh, but definitely, like always, we're looking towards the future. And uh, definitely, as the technology comes out there, we're going to be looking to push the envelope. All right. So, JJ, you also have the Strix 7.1 headset behind me. Why don't we go ahead and grab that and show everybody at home a closer look sure. at what you guys are doing with this headset. So, this is a pretty interesting headset. So, this is actually a true 7.1 headset. Okay. So, as opposed to traditionally with a normal headset, it's two channels, right? So, we've got a couple of pretty cool things on it. First and foremost, you can see there that we've got a clear acrylic. So, this allows you to go ahead and have uh, actually a viewable section to the Strix I logo. You can control the backlight for this, which means you can turn it on, you can turn it off, you can go ahead and even have a cool breathing effect. In addition to that, of course, uh, these guys are on a swivel, so you can go ahead and adjust it to your liking. So that if you got a wider head, you know, head different head size, things like that, you're good to go. You can see right here, we've gone ahead and also removed the ear pad. So you got a nice, soft, breathable material right here uh, that you can go ahead and remove and either replace or clean, easy access. Of course, you got some nice padded material there for your head. And of course, on the inside, really what makes it the star of the show right there is you got those independent 10 neo, uh, medium drive, uh, excuse me, neodymium, ne drivers. Yeah. neodymium drivers right there. So you got the front, uh, the side, the rear, and the subwoofer. And uh, these have also been specially tuned for mid and high frequency response, uh, which is really going to be critical, especially for two channel operation for music, movies, and games on top of that. And now we're, we've got some cool functionality though, beyond just this. Oh, we oh. also have the microphone too. Yeah. The that. microphone is actually entirely detachable, which is another benefit. And, uh, and it's entirely flexible. So you can go ahead and set it up to your liking, which is really nice. Nice. Perfect. So I think where things get really interesting is with this guy right here. So this is a really nice control pod. It also happens to be a USB sound card. So it's pretty sweet. Plug nice. and play means no drivers. You don't have to worry about installing any software. Just go ahead and get it connected. First and foremost, it's got a line level out, so you can go ahead and connect your speakers. And then from there, at the touch 
of a button, you can go ahead and switch it either between the headset or the speakers. So you don't have to all tab out or do any of that weird stuff. You're just good to go, right? You can go ahead and the touch of a button, disable or enable the microphone. Cool. We also have an integrated amp in there, so that allows you to punch up the actual dynamic range, give you louder volume, and overall enhance the sound stage. Excellent. Uh, you've got quick toggle for 7.1 or two channel operation. Now when you're in 7.1, one of the really cool effects is that you can go ahead and go to any one of the drivers and independently tune it. So if I want to go ahead and Switch increase it, between. bam, I can go ahead and accentuate the center, or I can go ahead and accentuate the sub, whichever ones I want. Yeah. We also have a, a spectrum mode, which means you can go ahead and set it for optimized for gunshots. You can go ahead and optimize for footsteps, action RPG, or driving, mm -hmm. uh, racing, different types of game environments. And lastly, you even have a spectrum, excuse me, um, environmental noise canceling built in. So that if you got like ambient white noise, people talking, things like that, you can go ahead and eliminate that so you get better dialogue when you're utilizing the microphone. Basically, uh, another microphone right there on the DAC, and then it just basically senses everything else around it and yep. cuts it out. That's really cool too. Yeah, so there's a lot that's really distilled into that that guy that I think really gives it a huge amount of flexibility and functionality for you guys that are looking for an awesome surround gaming headset, looking for improved accuracy and looking for that kind of more dynamic experience when you're gaming. So that'll be coming out towards the end of Q1. Excellent. Let's take a look at your mice. Okay. So you can see right here, we've got a couple of different ROG gaming accessories. For us, we're not necessarily super focused on having a super big portfolio okay. in terms of our ROG gaming peripherals. Our focus is really kind of trying to distill down products that are really requested to us by the community. So uh, that's what we first and foremost did with the Gladius, which is really trying to set like the pinnacle of an, a high-end FPS-centric mouse with a lot of customization parameters. So we've taken a lot of the premium features from that guy and distilled it down into two new mice. So the first one is going to be the Sika. The Sika is going to be more more of an entry-level mouse in terms of the price point. It's going to be focused towards entry-level first-person shooters as well as for mobile players. Our users are just looking for a quality, high-performance mouse. Um, it's going to be utilizing a high-quality optical engine, so 5,000 DPI, 1,000 hertz in terms of the polling rate. Good. You're going to get a nice uh, backlit uh, ROG red LED with a nice breathing effect, which is going to look pretty <laughs> slick. Uh, it's light, so you can also go ahead and uh, use it in terms of travel. Some of the premium features also outside of the quality of the construction and the high-quality optical engine is that it will have the socket base design that oh, we had on the Gladius. So Good. if you want to go ahead and upgrade to those a much higher quality or change out to different types of switches like the Japanese Omron, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and do that. So that's a great option, especially at a much more aggressive price point to be able to introduce that level of flexibility. I think it makes a lot of sense too at that price point because then it's like get in the door first, get a great mouse, and then upgrade it later. Yeah, Everybody exactly. Likes upgrades. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's I think going to be a really cool option. This one will probably be targeting a time frame of about Q1. And uh, if you guys, I don't know if you can see it too much in terms of the color, but the color palette we're still going to be refining. It's going to be as close as we can get it to the original Gladys as well. So there'll be some continuity to having that really nice, clean, stylized color to it. Okay. Now, the next one up we have is the Spatha. Uh, this one's really interesting. Um, so this is actually going to be a wired and wireless mouse. It's going to bring a lot to the table. It's really designed for the guys that are really into complex MOBA gameplay, action RPG, MMO, RTS, simulation, and maybe some advanced uh, FPS. But on the FPS, I think Gladius would be a better fit. Okay. Um, but uh, some of the cool things that you're going to have on this guy is you're going to have RGB lighting in terms of the back area right here. Here you can see the uh, independent buttons that you can go ahead and macro commands. you got some grip on there. You've got the independent left and right just like we have on the Sika and just like we have on the Gladius, so another premium feature set. Plus you've got the ability to have the swappable socket design as well. We'll have RGB lighting on the scroll wheel and then we'll also have lighting here on the DPI shift. Um, and so then from there you also have the charging station right here which you can lay flat or also there's a stand which you can do it vertically with. So uh, I think it's going to be a pretty awesome mouse. This one's going to be projected for late Q2 time frame. As far as the sensor, we are targeting laser-based usage, but we'd love your guys' feedback. Um, there is some complexity in terms of trying to incorporate an um, optical grade sensor, but we'd love to see your guys' feedback here in terms of if you're interested in seeing a wireless optical-based solution instead. Awesome. So uh, lastly, we've got the Whetstone. So the Whetstone is really interesting. It's a very high-quality uh, surface and so essentially surface, it's a mouse pad, right? Uh, or mouse mat, as you want to call it. The big difference right here is the back is this. This is a very high grade silicone. Uh, so it's got outstanding resistance in terms of slipping. Um, and on the top, we have a specially designed surface material that's outstanding for tracking. It's just super smooth. You saw um, when you try it on there, even oh, with yeah. just one finger, just glides across. We have this nice, very high quality textured finish on there that we worked very carefully on so that uh, you have really outstanding uh, tracking precision and consistency. Looks when you're gorgeous, moving too. everything. 
and it looks cool. Yeah, and it just looks cool. And even in terms of the quality, uh, some really cool points on it is we've gone ahead and treat, treat treated all the edges all the to mitigate any type of fraying. And also because of the silicone, it's not porous in nature. So things, even if you get like uh, spills on liquids, it won't settle inside and kind of make your mouse pad smell. So uh, this guy will be coming in not too distant future, probably about Q1 time frame. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. I, I did want to talk to you about one more thing, yeah. and that's an awesome monitor, but it's in another location. Can we okay. run downstairs and take a look? I think we can take a look at that. Awesome. JJ, you yes. hid this monitor from me. What have I you did. done? I, I need to know more. <laughs> this is definitely an awesome monitor for I think a lot of the guys that uh, were interested in the RG Swift. It was an awesome panel. I think we absolutely did the right decision at giving guys one millisecond, 144 hertz in terms of the response time in a premium 8-bit TN panel. Yeah. Um, but we've been able to go ahead and continue to progress and we have something I think a lot of guys that are interested in the absolute higher level image quality that IPS has to offer are going to be really excited about this. So this is a brand new division in terms of that we're opening up in terms of the monitor line that we're going to have. So this is the MG series. Okay. So this is is the MG279Q. This is going to be 2560 by 1440. Uh, right now it's 120 hertz plus. We are working at being able to incorporate 144 hertz, uh, five milliseconds response time, okay. but an IPS based display. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so I think this is going to be an awesome option for you guys that are out there that wanted that ultra high resolution of 2560 by 1440, the high refresh rate, a very low response time, not the absolute lowest, but five milliseconds is true five milliseconds is very, very good for gaming, um, but you're going to get that big benefit of bumping up the the actual picture quality, being able to have more vibrant colors, deeper blacks, and wider viewing angles. I think it's an awesome display that's going to be coming a, out. It's a good trade-off. I mean, four milliseconds. Yep. I mean, I, yep. I don't know if I'll be able to tell, tell the difference. Maybe, yeah. maybe at some point or another we can set something up and you could do, give me like a double blind test or something. We'll have I'd to come to out that. maybe to Newegg TV and see if we can make, make, make happen. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So this guy's going to be coming in the not too distant future, so definitely make sure to stay tuned to Newegg TV. I'm sure you guys will have more information as we're getting ready to ship it out, but I'm very excited about this panel for a lot of gamers out there, a lot of enthusiasts so looking for better picture quality, awesome high resolution, high refresh rate, and then low response time. Definitely. It's a great option. So many gamers out there, they complain about TN. So definitely IPS, this is for them. Yep, definitely awesome. for them. Yeah. JJ, thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks to for stopping us, man. by, man. Appreciate it. Thank you guys also for watching, and stay tuned for more of our CES 2015 coverage.